Hi, I'm John O'White, founder of Clarity, and I wanna take a moment to thank the thousands of leaders who've done our seven questions on leadership so far. In fact, if you're a leader watching this, a leader in any capacity, we would love to have you involved. It's free and you get to share your advice with leaders around the world and it'll really help a lot of people. Um, so go to consultclarity.org if you'd love to be involved. But right now, we have taken the best of the best. Those who answered the seven questions and we went, wow, we just, we just think leaders around the world would really benefit from hearing even more from you. And we've asked them to put something on camera with their advice around leadership. So I really believe this is gonna help you. Enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is Catherine Abraham and I'm currently working in India for a company called TC Global Private Limited. The question that has come to me is, how do you deal with difficult school leaders who have belief systems that are different from yours? Now, I come from a culture where we are taught early on to respect differences because each one comes from a different place of knowing with a different experience altogether. So it isn't really difficult. But these things tend to impact when it comes to crucial decision making. And this is where I like to adopt and adapt a three-step process. Whenever there's a decision to be taken, the first thing I would look at is who are the stakeholders to the situation? Number two, what is this decision all about? Is it something that is going to impact people at a very minimal level or is it going to actually create a greater impact to a larger set of people and the third thing i'd like to do is to sit down with the person himself or herself and objectively assess what are the differences in opinion and the differences in our belief system the problem that we generally tend to have is that of a communication uh, barrier that we set. Each of us likes to believe that we are all correct, but that might not always be so. So when I look at point number three, that is to objectively assess this entire problem and come to a shared decision, it just allows the other person to become more accepting of me. It allows me to become more accepting of them at the same time. So when we are looking at, you know, different systems, different patterns, different beliefs, I think it's very important that we look at the big picture. And the big picture is who are those people, those little tiny people that we are going to impact through our decision making. We need to lead by example and the sure short way of doing this is allowing each other to work together, to grow together and to allow these ego barriers, these communication barriers to actually relegate into the background. Now the minute we start doing this, what would essentially happen is that we are going to give each other much needed space. We're also going to respect each other for their beliefs. The minute we start respecting other influencers, other leaders and their thoughts and their nature of work, it just makes the workplace a very, very beautiful place to live in, to work in, to synchronize in. And I think the synchronicity of, you know, workplace um, staffers, uh, officials, leaders, all of these make an impact on how happy the place becomes. So I like to do happy work and the easiest way to do happy work is to ensure that sometimes I take a step back and I allow the other person to actually uh, have their way. Now, when this is happening and if I have a reservation, the one thing I would most definitely do is to put down my reservation both in written and oral formats. This would actually be etched in record that I have made a slight reservation and I am committed to what I believe. When the decision is finally taken and in case my reservations have not been uh, con considered, two things can happen. One is perhaps everything is good, all is fine and dandy and the decision that was taken is absolutely perfect and 
everything is good, which means that's absolutely fine. But in the event that something goes amiss, I know for a fact that the next time they take a decision, they're going to keep my reservations also in mind. They are going to give me uh, a, a very patient listening ear and they're going to take my reservations rather seriously because the impact that I'm talking about is given through a very, very logical statement. Don't ever deliver your final statement, which is your reservation, without actually giving a reason because this renders communication incomplete and you just come out as an egoist, which you do not want to. So I hope this a tiny little tip has helped you and I thank uh, this organization Clarity for giving me an opportunity. Thank you so much.